Ladies and gentlemen, I'm full of optimism. Einstein's theory of relativity. We're still seeing it quite well through that haze. He likes 37 seconds. Fight the green continent. E equals MC. That all men are created equal. About the future innovations. And growing strength in the air. Tear down this world. This is Finding Your Frequency with your hosts, Jeff Spinard and Ryan Treasure. It's time to speak up, share your voice, and hear from the thought leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wonderful episode of Finding Your Frequency. I'm your host, Ryan Treasure. We've got a great show for you guys today. I know that last uh, few episodes, we've been really hitting home uh, the idea of leadership, servant leadership. What does it mean to be a leader? Some of those values that leaders have uh, for now and in the future and how some people can, uh, you know, make sure that you're eyeballing the right talent as an executive member of any kind of company and making sure that, you know, you're always open to employee ideas and, you know, all of those, all of those great things. And so I appreciate everybody tuning into those episodes. Today is the 4th of December and we're rounding out 2020 with some great interviews. Uh, you know, today we're going to talk about focus. Uh, you know, have you, have you guys ever felt stretched too thin by, you know, trying to do too much? I know I do. I'm constantly multitasking and sometimes I get so far out of, out of whack because I'm got too many tasks I'm trying to do simultaneously that I don't get any of them done. And, uh, you know, uh, then, then where do you find time for relaxation and deep thinking and, you know, family time and work life balance, which is also, you know, a really important thing. And, you know, like I said earlier, you're, you're completing a bunch of tasks, but are you actually achieving your goals? Well, that's what the focus project is all about. And that's who we're going to interview today. We've got a great guest, Eric Qualman. What, a, what a guy, I mean, this dude does all kinds of different stuff. And, you know, he's a five times number one, best selling author, keynote speaker. Um, he's performed in 55 countries, reached 50 million people, uh, and voted the second most likable author in the world behind Harry Potter's J.K. Rowling. So I want to give a big shout out to Eric Qualman. Eric, thanks for joining the show today. No, awesome to be here. I love the applause. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, man. I, I uh, you know, just poking through your website and looking at the stuff that your publicist had sent over and, you know, the way that you go about branding yourself and, and all the great things that you do, just, you know, kudos. I know that you do social nomics that's been on 60 Minutes and Wall Street Journal used by uh, National Guard and NASA and 500 universities using those materials. And, uh, you know, you're, you have an animation studio. So uh, all, all of these fun things that you're doing are all, uh, all, all things that resonate with me, too. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an audio engineer by trade uh, and also the VP of operations here at voiceamerica.com and making sure that all of our wonderful radio programs and podcasts are broadcast on time all the time. Uh, and and I love doing video stuff. I love After Effects. I love Adobe Premiere and uh, all those fun things. So uh, I think we're going to have a pretty cool conversation today. No, I love it. Uh, you're a renaissance man doing all this stuff. So it's great to hear that. Jack of all trades, master of most. <laughs> <laughs> well said well said so eric let's 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 get into it i mean um i know you have this book that you have uh that that's that's come out uh, the focus project which is super awesome um and and then you do a bunch of other things but before we get into what you're currently doing I, I want i want the audience to understand you know who you are why you do what you do and 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 what we call on our, on on the show was we called that's finding your frequency where was that you know aha moment in your life where you found your frequency and started traveling the path that you're currently on. No, I love it. And I'll, I'll tell the story because as you know and your listeners know that we're all living the same movie. We're just different actors and actresses. So I'll tell my story because I think it will resonate with everyone because we're living the same movie, diff different actors, different actresses. But I grew up outside of Detroit and then my career started off in the digital space. I fell into it backwards just because I was working at Cadillac at the time, and they needed a website. So they needed Cadillac.com. I was an intern. They said, you're young. We need this thing called a website. We don't know what it is. Go ahead and do it. So long story short, I fell into the digital space, and I was in the digital space at Yahoo back when they were kind of the Facebook of the day in the late 90s. I was the head of marketing at TravelZoo. We took that company from private to public. It became the top performing stock on the NASDAQ for, for a little while. And then for the last 11 years, I wrote a book, my first book, and now I've written seven books, which is really hard to imagine. I never thought I'd write one book, and now I've written seven. I wrote a book called Socialnomics. Uh, that was about 11 years ago, and primarily it was because 
Well, as the head of marketing at Travel Zoo, we were spending about $30 million in search, which was a lot of money at the time. And so people wanted to know why are we spending so much money on search and how to take advantage of Google to increase our performance, to increase our sales. And I started talking about social media at these search engine conferences. And so it's like, who's the guy with the horn on the head? Because all of a sudden they go, why are you talking about social media? That's for kids. That's for teenagers. And so that first book actually came out of frustration from a standpoint of, I go, how can you not see this? How can you not see that social media is going to change the way we communicate? That it might change the way we elect officials across all governments, across all countries. It's going to change the way we communicate with each other globally. And then all of a sudden I paused and started to laugh and go, oh, you can't see it. That's a good thing. And then so my buddy had me talk to a publisher and I literally rode up on a train from, I lived in Boston at the time and took the train down to New York and on the ride they had Wi-Fi on the train and so I was Googling good good titles for the book. And so I Googled social nomics. I'm like, yes, zero results. <laughs> and so I was able to pitch that idea to the publisher. We published the book. I did an animated video for two minutes around what the contents of the book kind of were. It wasn't about the book, just about what social media was. And that video went viral. And then the rest, as they say, is history. So now, as I said, I've been blessed to kind of visit 55 countries to reach over 50 million people. And our goal is to reach 7 billion people by the end of this decade to entertain, educate, and empower people to their best life through our edutainment materials. So that could be my books. It could be that I'm on stage. It could be through the websites. And so that's what we're trying to do is empower people to their best life so that they can inspire other people to do the same. Well, I mean, isn't that the whole the whole idea behind living life in the first place is to live it to its fullest? You know, and you got to you got to overcome. No, you're some, exactly some, right. You got to overcome obstacles and you got to be in the right headspace. And, uh, you know, uh, that that's that's really cool. that uh, You started talking about social media in such an early time and. Uh, I, I can't help but bring up our current space. I mean, look at look at the last couple of elections that we've had and how instrumental, um, you know, social media was in delivering uh, information to 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 massive amounts of human beings across the country for, um, you know, this this uh, elect election that we just went through. I mean, like the I, I think early on in those days when you were talking about it, did you even think that it was going to get as big as it is now? I didn't. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I thought it was going to be this massive and this disruptive and kind of last this long, if that makes any sense. We're social animals by nature, so I knew it was going to be huge. It's just a different way for us to connect. And then you throw now a pandemic on top of it. And so it's just been it's been massive, just the shifts, the seismic shift we've seen. And, and whenever you shift like this, there's obviously some nefarious activity. There's negative things that come along with it. But as we work our way through it, the tools will change. It's just up to us. We're humans. We're human beings just want to connect. Mm -hmm. And so we want to stay connected. If you look at 100-year-old people, like they research these people that live to be 100 years old. And the common denominator is that they have a large social set of friends. That's the number one predictor of living a long life is just surrounding yourself with a lot of people. And now, whether that's offline or now digitally, it's really about that communication as human beings. Yeah, no, and I, I like what you said, too, about, uh, you know, the tools and the tools change because, you know, we're on a precipice now, too, uh, with really cutting edge technologies, uh, you know, like blockchain and artificial intelligence, machine learning, some of those kind of things that are coming down the pipe right now um, that are starting to be highly used by uh, a, a bunch of a bunch of technology companies, business companies, CPA firms or, you know, yeah, there, there's a, a CPA firm that's all done by bots now, uh, you know, all of these cool new technologies and one of the things i always talk about uh when we have these conversations around these new emerging technologies especially artificial intelligence is uh you know making sure that we don't lose our humanity uh as some of these things like machine learning and artificial intelligence roll out it's uh it's extremely important for us to be um you know just the same way that we you know we raise our children i know you have i know you have a couple of daughters i have a daughter as well um but just like raising our children right we're we're teaching our children values and morals and you know all of those things, which I think are extremely important in the AI and machine learning world that uh, I think some people kind of, you know, may gloss over at times because uh, I can't help but think about, you know, the 90s movies when you think about Terminator and the machines taking over. Well, what if those machines actually had some morals? Maybe that wouldn't have happened, right? 
<laughs> no, you're right. And it's good that there's consortiums that are springing up to make sure that we try to avoid some of those scenarios. And I always talk about, hey, it's a combination. We talk about digital leadership. That's the top topic that people have me speak on stage. It's about that combination of Flintstones and the Jetsons coming together. It's <laughs> offline and online and the marriage of those two. Because technology changes every second, but human nature never does. And I know a lot of your listeners, when you think about frequency, they want to know, when did you find your frequency? It's really about stepping into your story. And it's really uncomfortable to step into your story. And it took me 15 years to do it. And so I'm going to tell you this quick story just because I hope that others can realize not to do what I did, which was resist your story for 15 years, that it is uncomfortable when you step into it. And so for anyone that's ever seen me, if you Google just Eric Qualman or Equal Man, I haven't always worn green glasses. And I always haven't always had a moniker of a superhero. But obviously, when you're handed an email address, then your name's Eric Qualman, first initial, last name, it's Equal Man. And I hated it. I did not like going to meetings when they'd say, oh, we need coffee. Equal Man can do it. He's super fast. Oh, you need to work the weekend? Well, for that report, Equal Man can do it because he's a superhero. He can work extra this weekend. And so I resisted it for 15 years. And then one of the books that we wrote, so I wrote a book called Digital Leader, and that was doing well. And then I sat down with a magazine, and they wanted to do a cover shoot. And so for that cover shoot, they go, hey, do you mind wearing some Clark Kent Superman glasses since you have this email handle that's Equal Man, you have a website Equal Man? I go, yeah, we can have some fun with it. And they go, hey, do you mind if they're bright green? Because we're going to have the St. Patrick's Day issue. I go, yeah, whatever it takes for your cover shoot. So we do that. I don't think much of it. And then a couple weeks later, I fly to Kenya to give a speech. The night before I land in Nairobi, the night before I was going to adopt a baby cheetah at this rescue shelter. Because you're in Kenya. You don't adopt dog and cats. You adopt lions and cheetahs <laughs> and the cheetah i'm not taking home my wife would tell me it's just to support the local shelter now on the ride over i'm with this lady that's showing me around kenya and she goes hey you know we had usain bolt the olympian here a couple days ago and he adopted from the same litter that you're going to adopt from we took some video and photo of bolt and we'd love to marry that we'd like to film you and take photos and marry those two videos together and film and raise more money for the shelter and I said, yeah, whatever, that's great, let's do it. And then she pauses and, and looks at me and goes, but obviously when we film you, we wanna make sure you're wearing your green glasses. And I look back at her and I go, oh, I don't wear those green glasses all the time. I look like an idiot walking around wearing green glasses all the time. <laughs> and I never wanna see that look on anyone's face again to where she said, no, that's what everyone in Kenya thinks you look like. And so what it did is all this time, I thought that the name Equal Man was happening to me and I didn't realize it was happening for me. And so for that moment on, I've stepped into becoming equal man. I've worn the green glasses, even though it's walking in discomfort each and every day when you wear, wear bright green glasses. And it's not easy. That's why I tell your listeners, it's the same <laughs> movie, just different actors and actresses, is it step into that discomfort. It's not going to be easy. That's why you haven't done it yet. That's why you haven't fully stepped into your story. But long term, it's the most comfortable place you can be. And so short term, that cost me business. Like people are going, no, 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 we're a bank. We want to have someone serious up there on stage. And then all of a sudden over time, it's really dramatically increased our business because they can remember, oh, that's that guy. He did a good job here. Oh, let's buy glasses for the entire audience. And so now our company produces green glasses for the entire audience. And then all of a sudden you write a book like The Focus Project, which I know we'll get into, but all of a sudden that plays well with The Focus Project because I have green glasses. And so Again, a long story to tell everyone, things happen for you, not to you. And most importantly, just don't do what I did. I resisted my story for 15 years. Step into that discomfort and step into your story because it's the most comfortable place you can be long term. Hey everybody, I wanted to tell you about this great shaving product that I've been using lately. Not only is it awesome, it will save you money. Enough to buy 26 cups of coffee in New York City or three deep dish pizza dinners in Chicago. Harry's is an awesome product. It delivers high quality razor blades as low as $2 each, a fraction of the price of leading brands and saving you hundreds of dollars at the same time. I really like the way that Harry's works. It has a very close shave. It's got a great design for the handle and also the scent of the shave gel is fantastic and it leaves your skin nice and smooth. You can get a trial set delivered to your doorstep by going to harrys.com forward slash frequency. 
quality, durable blades at a fair price, just two bucks a blade. They've cut out middlemen manufacturing blades in their German blade factory that's been honing precision blades for a century. I'm telling you, I use this product and it is absolutely amazing. Harry's has all your grooming needs covered in just one stop. You can get blades, hair care, shower products, all on harrys.com. And just like their blades, Harry is committed to providing premium products without breaking the bank. Again, visit harrys.com forward slash frequency. I want to make sure that everybody gets the chance to go check it out. You can feel better too about the purchase because 1% of their proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations developed to helping provide access to better mental health care for men and veterans. How could you not get behind the veterans? So important nowadays. Listeners of the show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com forward slash frequency. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, five blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade. I use it every day. Rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated. And I'm telling you, when you get done shaving, your face will feel so smooth. It's amazing. You even get a travel blade cover to keep your razors dry and easy to grab on the go. So make sure you go to harrys.com dot com forward slash frequency to start shaving and saving today. One of the things when we talk to entrepreneurs and uh, keynote speakers and, you know, we've we've interviewed the the who's who gambit of those folks uh, across the, the stage and I'm good friends with Bill Walsh. And, you know, a lot of times when we have these conversations, it's like, you know, that that seems to be the thing, whether you're a keynote speaker or whether you're just a person who's, you know, working at a company for somebody else, like, you know, living your authentic authentic story and making sure that you are, uh, you're, you're living your truth. Um, because a lot of times, uh, that's, that's not happening. Uh, you know, I, I, you're going to laugh back in the, in the, in the nineties, I used to DJ at clubs and raves and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, everybody always used to ask me like, well, what's your, what's your DJ name? And I'm like, I don't have one. I'm just Ryan treasure. And they're like, well, it's cool. It's cool that your last name is treasure. That's maybe a little bit marketable, but, uh, and then, and then my friend goes, yeah, but Ryan's always ready to rave. And so then boom, that became RTR was now my DJ name, my stage name are ready, ready to rave. Uh, and, and, uh, it was like, I never liked it. Just like, you know, you, you, you kind of didn't feel so comfortable about, you know, equal man. I'm like ready to rave. That's just kind of cheesy. Um, everybody else liked it and I got more gigs because of it. And, uh, you know, ultimately was able to pay my way through most of college after I got home from the military on top of my GI bill with DJing. And, um, had I not accepted or embraced the whole ready to rave or RTR moniker as my DJ stage name, I would have not been able to do that. So, um, I think it is important. Sometimes, sometimes things happen to you for you, like you mentioned. And um, I think it's important people take a step back and just realize that some of that stuff is uh, it's meant to be. It's by design, maybe not your design, but uh, by the by the design of uh, of fate for where you're going. Right. Right. No, spot on. I love that story. R two R. And then thanks for serving. My grandfather's still alive. And That's he so served awesome. In World War Two. So it's awesome. Thank you for serving. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 you know, t we're recording this today is Veterans Day, uh, on November 11th, and I've been getting messages from everybody, and every time I hear that, I just tell everybody thank you, and I would do it again. <laughs> awesome, that's great. I love it. So, um, I know you've written a few books. Um, I, I really like the the you know digital leadership stuff um, that that you've done. Let's let's talk a little bit about that because. Um, I think it's important that people understand what is a digital leader, what is digital leadership, um, you know, because you have all of these new and emerging things like influence, influencer, influencer marketing, you know, all of these things. And I'm, you know, seeing folks who are, you know, having, you know, a million followers on Twitter getting paid to tweet about prod, uh, products and some of those things. But I think I want to just for our audience differentiate, you know, what is digital leadership versus being an influencer or leveraging influencer marketing? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So digital leadership is kind of an umbrella of all items. So you're a leader. Digital leadership is more of a mindset. So people ask me, like, if you were to give a definition of digital leadership at the shortest level, it's just the word empathy. So can I put myself in your shoes and use digital tools to do that? So underneath that umbrella is everything. You just, so it's influencers, search, social, customer service, artificial intelligence, and it's the leaders at the top, so individuals. And the beautiful thing is digital leaders are made, they're not born. 
So again, it just gets back to that empathy. So when I'm asked to be on stage at a large company or a large conference, I just walk them through that some of you guys are deep into digital. So I'm just going to have you step further into that leadership role. Others of you don't think you become digital leaders because you think that you're not technical when it's the absolute opposite of that. It's really about that empathy. And here we're going to take your first step into becoming digital leaders. And so that's what it is at a super high level. It's just that empathy. And then the tools all change. And so as I've said, technology changes every second. Human nature never does. All digital leaders understand that. So it's leading Flintstones first, Jetson second, and then marrying those two together, that Flintstones and Jetson world. And so that's really what digital leadership is all about. There'll be technology that changes tomorrow. You just mentioned influencers. We can get into specific aspects, tools slash channels, whatever you want to call the pieces that fall under the umbrella of digital leadership. But in time, since everything's becoming digital, especially we've been hyper accelerated three to five years in this pandemic, that you can almost remove the word digital and it's just leadership. But right now we're kind of walking through that transition. And so that's why it's digital leadership. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail right on the head spot on with accelerating because of the pandemic. I mean, uh, digital as a whole, doesn't matter whether it's social leadership or whatever has just been um, it, it took it took a it took a five year leap in seven months. Right. I mean, I watched <laughs> I mean, everybody's now an expert on Zoom and video conferencing, <laughs> so uh, which has been great, especially for, you know, I know you do a podcast and, you know, I, I, I do an Internet radio show that that also goes to podcasts. But um, I had been using Zoom for quite a long time and it was very difficult for me when I would get on Zoom uh, interviews like we're doing right now. And the person had never used Zoom before. And so I'm spending, you know, 10 minutes just trying to get them set up with Zoom so we can do our interviews, whereas, uh, you know, know right around March or April as all that stuff started to become embraced like everybody's got a microphone now everybody's got a pair of headphones everybody knows how to use zoom and it's really uh, it's escalated my ability to do what I do for the radio show and making sure that finding a frequency has good sound quality and um, you know we're not uh, uh, you know sound like we're you know holding the ends of a tin can on some string um, but it's really accelerated across the way. And I think especially with social media, like I don't, I don't know where I would be right now without social media. Um, right. I, I haven't, I haven't gone on a vacation. I haven't uh, gone and seen extended family that didn't live, you know, uh, it, right here in my own local area in Phoenix. Like my mom lives here. So I, I, I was going to see my mom when I could. Uh, and when, when those types of things, uh, but uh, again, I got a seven year old daughter too, who's, you know, as they tout with the pandemic, the super carrier and Oh my goodness, they're spreading it to everyone. And so my mom's like almost 80. So it was important for us to keep her safe. But, and because of social media, because of Facebook chat and messenger, um, you know, those types of things, we were all still able to stay as connected as possible without being in physical presence of each other uh, because we've all started to embrace some of these technologies. Um, And, you know, and I'm not going to get into the negatives of any of the technology because there are negatives. And I think a lot of people, you know, they, they know what the negative pieces are, but, you know, wanting to just stay, you know, completely positive. But I think those 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 social media pieces are, have been so important for uh, togetherness and connectivity between families and friends um, that haven't had a chance to see each other in in in, in this time during the pandemic. And um, I'm thankful for social media. I'm thankful for digital for that because without it, I think we'd probably be in a far worse space right now as human beings that are going through this pandemic. Amen. No, you are spot on. When time, distance, and in this case, safety are an issue, these digital tools can be used. They don't replace coffees. They don't replace lunches. But when time, distance, or safety are an issue, it allows you to keep those connections and deepen relationships. So you're right on. You guys have to check out this new service that I'm playing around with called Issue. It is totally amazing. You live to create, but you don't live to worry over the last nitpicky details involved in putting final touches on contact. You got to do what you do best and let Issue handle the rest. If you're a creative, you know the drill. You're finally done editing. It's perfect. Now you just need format and reformat for every single platform. With Issue, make it once and it's ready to post everywhere. Seriously, Issue is the all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications from brochures to magazines and sales collateral. It's perfect for creators, marketers, designers, educators, publishers, salespeople, or just anyone that wants to make eye-catching content that can be distributed on multiple platforms. Issue makes it really simple. 
Just upload the PDFs and files and Issue transforms them using your vision and customizable templates to create the content you want. With Issue, you just create it one time and distribute it everywhere. Everything is optimized to post on your website, social platforms like Instagram and Facebook. They can even help you make animated Instagram stories. And the best part about it, it is free. F-R-E-E free. That's right. It's free to get started with Issue. So go to issue.info slash frequency to sign up for your free account. That's I-S-S-U-U dot info slash frequency to sign up and let them know that you heard about it from this show, Finding Your Frequency. Remember, that's dot info, not dot com, dot info. So go to I-S-S-U-U dot info slash frequency and get your free account today. You know, one of the cool things that uh, that we did uh, with some of our staff here at Voice America was, um, you know, we... We do. I have a meeting with my production team, you know, every Monday, uh, and it's at ten o'clock in the morning. And so when we get done, it's eleven. It's almost lunchtime. And I said, you know what? Why don't we all have lunch together today? And they're like, what? We can't. I'm, well, you know, I'm at my house, and I'm at my house, and oh, I'm actually out of town, um, but working from you know my aunt's house or whatever the case was at the time. And I said, no. Uh, what do you guys want to eat? You tell me. I'll order it. We'll have it delivered once you, everybody has their food. We'll all jump on to Zoom, and we can have lunch together. You know, and uh, it was kind of a, a good time. We had a lunch and learn session just talking about some things and some uh, projects we were working on and some different stuff that we wanted to accomplish over the next couple of months. And um, it was the first time that I ever ate lunch digitally with anybody. And uh, it's now became a weekly thing for, for my team. We, we do it once a week. I buy everybody lunch. We all meet on Zoom. And uh, I think those are just some unique ways and some things that, you know, that we've done on our on our side. But um, I think I think this this whole pandemic has brought out a whole level of uh, of creativity for marketers, uh, for entrepreneurs and business owners and uh, executive members, uh, even even middle management of, you know, how do we stay connected with our customers? How do we stay connected with each other? Um, and and, you know, one thing I love about humanity, right, is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And uh, you, you've seen it time and time again with with humanity, especially in this pandemic with, you know, those creative things um, that people people are doing. I mean, uh, you, you do video animations and video production and all those things. How much more creative have you got to be, um, in, in this space because you've had a little bit, maybe more time on your hands. Um, when, when, you know, not being able to go out and, uh, on a Friday night with your friends and have some dinner or whatever the case may be, or take the family out for dinner in your home. Um, how has your creativity been excelled during all this? I love it. Yeah, you got to take it. I'm a glass, 100% full kind of guy. You know, you think about 50% oxygen, 50% water. But for the majority of our business, so we do a lot of stuff, animation. We've got the web properties we talked about. But I'm usually on stage speaking for an hour. And so fly in, speak for an hour at the conference, and then I fly back or fly to the next event. And so it has forced us to get even more creative. Now we were really lucky that we already had the animation studio. So we were set and poised for virtual events. But that being said, before the pandemic, people didn't really grasp the concept of a virtual event because they'd say, Hey, we want to book you for this event. I'm like, sorry, we're booked up for the entire year. I physically am already in too many cities, like physically not possible for me to be there, but we could do a virtual. And they're like, ah, what's that? You know, they didn't really grasp it. So to your point, a lot of people, unknowingly are saying the wrong thing when they say when we go back it's really when we go forward and so now when we go forward and when live events come back we don't know when those are but then you're going to have the marriage of live events and then also when i can't physically be at two places at once they'll be fine with going okay you're already speaking in phoenix you can't get to new york to speak but we'd love to have you do it virtually and so then i'll be in phoenix on a broadband connection because broadband's greatly increased because of demand during the pandemic and now I can do that virtually. So you're exactly right. As we make our way through this, there's a lot of innovation. That's one thing that we've had to do is innovate continually on the virtual events, which look completely different than they did in March as they do now as we sit here in November. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I uh, SAP and Deloitte are uh, customers of ours. And, you know, they, they came to us and were like, 
well, we're doing radio shows and podcasts and all that stuff with you guys. How do we, how do we, how do we take it to a whole other level? Because, uh, you know, they have this event, uh, SAP does called Sapphire. That's generally at the Orlando convention center. That's once a year. Like I went, I went a couple of years ago, like Kobe Bryant was one of the, uh, keynote speakers there just before he passed away, which so it's really good to, to kind of hear his story and stuff. But I mean, we're talking massive event where, you know, a hundred thousand attendees, um, the entirety of the, uh, Orange County convention center, um, you know, millions and millions of dollars being spent for, uh, multiple keynote speakers throughout the day over the course of several days right and so here you have this you know multinational multi-billion dollar company who now has a budget for all this stuff and they can't do anything you know and so they they came to us and they're like well what can we do and so we got super creative we did a hybrid live internet talk radio show that went to a podcast that was a webinar with questions and slides and you know all this fun stuff and we were able to then take that content and repurpose it and chop it up into a bunch of different bits and pieces for them to use for their internal stuff and then marketing could use it for other things to market other events and you know in in a one and a half hour uh or one hour and 45 minute time span we created so many pieces of content uh, because we were doing audio and video and simulcasting and all of that kind of stuff it ended up being um, a new product line for for us here at voice america where we now offer that as what we do and man are those things so fun to do as an audio engineer and and quarterbacking all of those pieces and it's it's it gives me the same feeling that i get when we do a live and in-person event doing it digitally because you know i'm still technical directing the whole thing we're still you know you know getting engagements and people are raising their hands and engaging and asking questions and all of those types of things and I got to thinking about it and I'm like, I'm like, this could ultimately be more effective than an actual live in-person event in some, in some key areas because you have, you know, a, it was less cost for anybody to do it because you don't have uh, travel and, you know, hotel and food and, you know, all of those hard expenses that go with, you know, going and traveling out to an event. But I'm like, these attendees don't have to do anything. They could literally show up in their underwear because they don't have to take a get a suit press. They don't have to go to the airport to go to a specific venue. They don't have to go across town in their car. They don't have to do any of that. So, like their their cost uh, or or cost for entry into the event becomes so much less. Uh, we were extremely surprised at the total number of volume of people we were able to get to be engaged simply because it just cost them less money. People who weren't ever going to go to Sapphire showed up at this thing. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it was amazing. Are you guys seeing some similar instances by embracing technology and embracing the uh, creative side in that where where you're seeing uh, in some instances higher engagement than you would in a live event? No, it's one of the silver linings is exactly that is that at a virtual event, which we've done now, I think we did 10 in the last week here is that you can engage, and I know the person's name, especially if I'm Zoom, I can see the person. And if there's an event of 5,000 people, now we can use the chat functionality. So what we do is adjust. Normally, I'd be 45 minutes, 50 minutes on stage. A lot of times, no Q&A. Because in a live audience, sometimes that gets out of control. I love Q&A, but sometimes just the person that's hired me doesn't want to go to Q&A. But in the virtual events, essentially, it's almost always 50-50. So there's a lot more time for Q&A, which I love because that's when I learn. That's when I know it's top of mind for other people and it can answer specific questions. And since it's not a microphone where someone might not even be asking a question, they're trying to promote their business, whatever it is, they have a run-on sentence <laughs> for an hour, the question takes 20 minutes to ask, is that you've got the moderators that can actually grab those questions. So there are a lot of silver linings to kind of this new, new. And as I said, as we make our way through it, it'd be great. And I think you hit the nail on the head it was interesting because we've got the Focus Project book out now. In that book, we didn't know a pandemic was coming when I wrote that book. But then all of a sudden, it's we're starting to see as I sit down with individuals and also companies, there's a lot of people are having a tough time figuring out what to focus on now that the world has shifted. And so the question is, where is your focus? Is your focus on the opportunities or is your focus on all the chaos that's around you that you can't control? And so it's been a fascinating time on the book side because we're like, so many people asked us, hey, instead of launching the book in October, November, can you pull it forward, which is unheard of in the publishing world. But we said, yeah, it looks like everyone needs this. So we'll move it forward. And we did the unthinkable and moved it forward. And so it's just been one of those things that we've been adjusting on the fly as well.
Yeah, and what a great segue too, because that's exactly where I wanted to go. Um, is move into talking about the Focus Project. You know, um, the, your book is designed to provide answers and, and solutions to challenging uh, uh, challenges of focusing in an unfocused world. I mean that 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 one sentence there from your marketing material is is so spot on right now because everybody's so focused on covid and they are unfocused on some of the other components and i think it's i I think you 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 were you you releasing your book early was i know how hard that is but it was very it's good that you did that because um people need to hear this stuff if you're a business owner if you're an entrepreneur if you're a leadership position at a business and you are you know responsible for making sure companies hit its revenue goals or any of those things you got to make sure you're focusing on the right thing i know so many companies who when all this stuff started they um you know they they were like oh my god we're we're not how are we going to make money and they didn't they didn't they didn't think of the most important thing which was you know you're not going to hit your goal this year like get over it right it's it's not the same you know let's uh let's gear up for 2021 and hit the goal then because there's no way you know maybe some some folks may have hit their revenue goal but i know many a company who there's no way they're going to hit their revenue goal they had some projected growth and all these things and these things hinged upon events and different things that were supposed to happen that can't but i think once people get out of the way and understand that okay i'm not going to hit my goal this 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 uh this year for a revenue but what is the most important thing for me to focus on and and i i told this to our executive management crew and i said the most important thing that we need to focus on as a company is keeping all the customers that we currently have like let's get through this and not lose one customer and they all looked at me and went that's a great idea and so that has been our sole focus for 2020 even though yes we're still focused on new business but you know our main goal has been like let's not lose any business let's make sure we keep everybody happy uh what new products and what new tools can we put in place to uh, expand our offering without an additional cost to our current customers to make sure that they stay here right because they all own businesses as well they all have stuff that's going on they may not hit their number and the last thing that you want to do is be uh removed from the budget equation <laughs> you know what i mean uh and so it was kind of like you, you got to focus on keeping those people. What What is your thought around around that and focus for um, some of the businesses that you've worked with this year? The key, and we it hit us as well. So we were speaking from firsthand experience is that our business, like a lot of businesses, went immediately to zero. So if you're not for us 100% zero, but the speaking side of things go to zero because you can't have a live event during a pandemic. And this is before virtual events took off. And so at first we did the immediate reaction. It's in our DNA. We have old software in our brain, protective stance goes to, wait, how are we gonna make revenue? Just what you said, what are we doing? How are we gonna survive? And then you gotta inverse that. And this relates to focus. If I hadn't gone through that project myself to write the book, it would have been very, a bigger challenge for sure. And so whenever you're stuck and don't know what to do, a good question to ask is how can I help? And so sometimes that involves volunteering. Sometimes it's just using your talents, you know, your treasures and your time to help other people. And so I asked our team, what do we do better than most? Well, we're really good at animation. We can't speak on stage right now. But we're really good at animation. And I go, everyone's suffering through this pandemic. I go, you know, those charts with the moving graphs. I haven't seen any of those. I'm getting this data on the coronavirus and how it's, but I don't see the moving charts and those moving charts are easier for me to read. Is that something we can do? Can we do that? And I asked our animators, they said, yeah. And I, they just need a data set. I go, is this data set fine? And they go, yep, we can pull that data set. We can make these things move daily so we can show where it's spreading, not only in the United States, but also across the country. I go, perfect, that'd be helpful for me. And if it's helpful for me, I know it's probably helpful for other people. And so we decided to do that. Obviously there's a cost to my team to do that, but we thought it was worth it. And when we did that, we're shocked at just how many other people wanted to view that all of a sudden. And there's benefits to our business because all of a sudden there's an ancillary thing that all of a sudden our subscribers to YouTube channel took off. Someone reposted on TikTok and it got 20 million views. All of a sudden all the traffic to equalman.com increased. Uh, so it wasn't why we did it. We wanted to ask, how can we help? But that's what I always talk to people when they don't know what to focus on, don't know what your passion is, kind of ask the question, how can I help? And that will often lead you down the right path. Sometimes that's just volunteering your time. And when you do that, you know that someone else is gonna benefit. 
And normally it's two people. It's you as well, probably going to get more out of it than the person that you're helping. And so whenever you're stuck, that's one thing we learned during our research of the Focus Project, or I learned during the research of the Focus Project. Whenever I'm stuck, I need to pause and think outside of myself. And then the world becomes much bigger when you think outside of yourself. And so when you start thinking just yourself, the world gets quite small. And so that's always a go-to for me when I when I'm stuck is to ask, how can I help? Yeah, no, I love where you're going with that. And that ties back to an episode that we did a couple of weeks ago that's called Servant Leadership. Um, and, you know, one of the things about true leadership is serving others. And sometimes that means serving them for no greater, no benefit of your own other than the self-gratification that you're helping somebody. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, we talk to entrepreneurs and new business owners and they ask questions about like, well, how do I start drumming a business? And I'm like, you need to get out to some networking events and start serving some people because, you know, you, you've got to give something of yourself away for anybody to trust to do business with you in the first place. And so, you know, when, when you talk about asking people what they need, um, that, that, that's true servant leadership in my eyes. No, yeah, it's spot on. It's, and then one thing I always... A top question I get, whether you're 18 or 80, is, oh, man, everyone talks about follow your passion, but I don't know what my passion is. And I say, first of all, don't stress out about that. There's people that are 80-year-olds that don't know their passion. And so the greatest predictor to success in business and life, do you know what the greatest predictor of success, I'm going to put you on the, on the spot here. It's a pop quiz. The greatest predictor of success in business and also life, and they've sat down and done a lot of research on this. Do you know what that, that is? The, pre- the predictor of success? Yeah. Like what do, what do people that are very successful both personally and also in business share in common? They never give up. That's one. It's high, but it's self-awareness. <laughs> okay. And yeah. so it's fascinating. Self-awareness ties into your passion because a lot of people freak out. They don't know what my passion is. Well, that's because sometimes you've got to help yourself with self-awareness. And so the best way you can do that is – each day for a couple of weeks, just write down what made you the happiest and why. And when you do that, you'll start to see a pattern and then that's your passion. And so whenever you're stuck and don't know what your passion is, do that exercise where you just write down at the end of the day, what made you the happiest and why? And then you'll start to see a pattern of where you want to go. Um, and a lot of people, and I agree with this, you got to reinvent yourself basically every 10 years, a lot of times. And so it's just, always asking yourself that question and we get stuck on what your passion is that's a good exercise to do (laughs) when doing that exercise did you ever write down lunch (laughs) (laughs) sometimes (laughs) no for sure and i always ask my daughters that question they're in third and fourth grade i'm like all right what's the best part of your day and they're like well it's nacho day so that was the best part of my day it was lunch nacho day or (laughs) i ate five pieces of my halloween candy today so yeah, I mean, some days it will just be lunch and then it's okay. Like you're not, don't try to, you know, create room temperature fusion every day. It's <laughs> right. just trying to figure out, oh, here's the pattern. Today it was lunch, but not every day is lunch. And then, yeah. you, or if it is lunch, you're like, then maybe you need to start a sandwich shop, shop right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's funny that you said that. You ask your daughter, I, I, I do that every day when I get home from, from the studios. I, I, I have a seven year old, so she's, she's in second grade. So our kids are kind of around the same age. So, and what a fun age this is for sure. Um, yesterday I had some family in town and so uh, they, they live in Idaho and uh, so I was like oh well while you guys are here in Phoenix uh, let me let me go, let me a let me go find a place that's open <laughs> that you can go eat at uh, <laughs> but I let, let me take you guys to have Mexican food right because uh, I'm like you guys you guys don't know what you're missing in Idaho. So we went to go have Mexican food. So when I left the studio, um, I had to leave the studio and go directly to the restaurant. I didn't get the chance to go home. And so my wife and my daughter met us, met us there with the rest of the family who were in town. And, and I sit down and I look at my daughter and I was like, Hey Marley, how are you doing today? She's like, Oh, I'm great. And I was like, Oh wow. You must've had a great day. What was the best part of your day? I almost fell out of my chair when she answered this. She goes, dad, I think I got all my multiplication tables figured out. And I was like, nice. that was the best part of your day today was multiplication tables. I'm expecting her to say, oh, you know, I got to, you know, play my switch or, you know, I got to see my friends or, you know, whatever it is. And I was like multiplication tables. I'm like, I am in big trouble. If my seven year old is telling me that the best part of her day is multiplication tables, what is going to happen in five years from now? <laughs> 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 but it, it was, it was cool. Dad, moment, hey, you're doing you know? something right. That's a good answer. You want to have her say that I'm <laughs> yeah. fired up on my multiplication tables. Heck Yeah. 
So, um, you know, with the Focus Project, you guys have been doing, you know, a lot of different stuff, you know, guide to pursuing less in order to achieve more, which I think is is awesome. Um, do you think focus is the true choice that determines full success? You can never go wrong when you focus on the most important thing. And so that's what happens with the hamster on the wheel. I went under this project and I call it a project because here I am. I basically, I own my company. And a lot of days I felt like, man, was I running a million miles an hour and my hair's on fire, not going to happen again tomorrow. Same thing happened. <laughs> and so I say focus on the big versus the busy. And here I was succumbing to the busy. And I know better. Like I know that I'm supposed to just like, hey, I know to, to get in better shape, I need to work out and eat better. And so it sounds simple, but it's not easy. And so that's when I knew I was struggling with it. And then when I'm in the green room, whether it's at SAP Sapphire talking back behind the stage, whether the, whoever's going on to speak, you meet all these people, mm -hmm. whether it's a stay at home dad, whether it's a school teacher, a principal, it might be a CEO, entrepreneur, is that I realized they were wrestling with it too. How to focus in this unfocused world, how to figure out how to do less but better. And so that's why I undertook the project myself to take all this research that's out there and figure out, okay, I'm going to test this stuff and what works for me and what doesn't and do month by month, one thing a month, and then kind of grade myself. And the reason I did it was because I go, people are going to learn from this. And it was really uncomfortable for me to write personally because all of my other books are just business oriented. This one, I go, it's focus is so personal. I've got to tell them my story within the research. So that street science combined with the industrial research because then they would pick apart and go, oh, that worked for him. It didn't work for me, but I can see the pattern that he's going down and he tested these different things, whether it's focused foods, whether it's eating the same thing for breakfast, whether it's going to bed at a certain time, is just test all these things that are out there to figure out what's noise and what actually helps. Yeah, no, that's 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 great advice. Uh, great advice. Something I struggle with every day. I do, I've been doing martial arts for quite a while and I still, I'm like, I didn't work out enough today. I didn't practice enough today. I didn't do this enough today. And uh, once I finally stopped thinking about it so much, then I finally got into a proper swing of things. <laughs> you know, I was like being too hard on myself. Um, and I think that's one of the things people also need to remember is you can't be so hard on yourself. Set some goals and, you know, start chipping away. Do one thing at a time. Don't try to, don't try to, don't try to, you know, meet all of your goals simultaneously because then you, then you end up being overworked and then your wife's mad at you too, you know? <laughs> No, you're right. And that, uh, it was funny. My wife played a central part because I was writing about, and so we're going through the project. And I remember one day I was trying to open a drawer for my daughter and it was jammed. I couldn't open it and I'm struggling to pull it open. And I finally go, man, this thing is caught. So you got to stick your hand in there. You usually rip the top of the skin off your hand doing that. But it's like, okay, I got the drawer open. Let me reorganize this. And then lo and behold, I open the drawer next to it and it's completely empty and I go oh I'm a genius I'm going to move everything from this drawer into this empty drawer half of it and then my daughter which is hilarious just looks at me and goes daddy you can't move that into the drawer I go why not she goes that's mommy's empty drawer and I go what do you mean this drawer's jammed I'm going to put it in here and she goes I wouldn't do that I warned you <laughs> and then I got my wife comes home and exactly right she's like what is this stuff in the drawer and then if I hadn't been going through the focus project, I would have thought she was crazy, but she was crazy like a fox. She was spot on to where she said that empty drawer symbolizes that my life isn't completely overrun and over full. And so we talk about in the book, it's okay to have that empty drawer. And that to your point, it's not perfection that we're going for, we're going for progress. And that you need that space. And so we always laugh about that empty drawer, but it's a symbol that you're not trying to just add, add, add. Because everyone has a misconception, and I did too, that I have a lack of time. What I have is a lack of priority, meaning that if we were all gifted a 30-hour day, we'd quickly fill that day. We've seen that in the pandemic firsthand. When the pandemic first started, you go, I have all this time on my hands. And a couple months in, now you've filled that time. You used to maybe get on that Zoom with your brother that was in a different state and go, why don't we do this every Friday? And then all of a sudden you quickly fill up that time. So it's not a lack of time that we have. It's a lack of priority. And so that empty drawer always reminds me to make sure that you have that empty drawer, that space. 
What a great analogy. Gotta gotta have some space. And I, I, I always I, I, I use that same analogy, but like in my own mind, right? I have to leave I have to leave some space in my own mind for it to be able to expand, which means not taking on too much, not uh, you know, overtaxing myself and with multi multi multitasking projects. That's I have the hardest time with that, Eric. I'll, in the morning I'm like, okay, I have these three very important things that I'm going to get done. And I start working on one of them. And then I start working on the next one and I start working on the next one without finishing the first one. And then the day gets by at the end and I haven't completed any one of them. And then I go, I got to focus better. So we'll reset level set for tomorrow. And then, you know, when I started doing one thing at a time and making sure that I got it complete before I moved on to the next one, lo and behold, I started getting stuff done properly. <laughs> <laughs> amen and you sound like there's four spirit animals it's not, we all major in one and minor and the other and this is good for your audience to self-identify it sounds like you are doing army ant so the the four spirit animals are you've got squirrel that's someone that's the next shiny object and they're all positive aspects like it's like you want to be the next thing you want to be at the hot restaurant you want to be aware of the trends your struggle is that you move on to the next item before this one's complete. Yep. Then if you look at the hedgehog, that's someone that's like, I'm going to write a book, but I've got to get a full PhD in writing or in English before I write the book. So you're very protective. Or some of your protection is that you're going to procrastinate. What the hell is that? Compared to procrastination, procrastination is you're actually working. You're answering email, but you're not doing the thing that you should be doing. You're not doing the big thing. You're doing the busy. So you're procrastinating. And that's what a hedgehog does. <laughs> and then we look at the chameleon. Chameleon puts others first. And so it might be you're in a job because, hey, this is pays well, good benefits for my family, but it's not my passion. And so you're putting others before you, which is good, but long term, it's just like if you're on an airplane, they say to put on that safety mask on you first before you help your kids. <laughs> and so you got to make sure that you're whole, you're right before you help others. So that comes down to focus as well. Then last but not least, I'm going to project this on you because it's something you said, but it might be that you either major or minor in army ant, which I do as well. I'm a major in army ant is you take on a lot of projects at once because you can. So an army ant can carry 5,000 times their weight. That doesn't mean they should just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Cause when you get to that ant hill, that top of that ant hill, you can't get it down. You got too much stuff. But in the real world, what that looks like, is that for myself, I'll project on myself, is that I'll take on five projects and parallel process those. And so it takes much longer to get them done. And they're not completed as well as they could have been. And it has health ramifications where if I just focused on one thing at a time and then moved, complete, move, complete, as best I can. We live in a obviously a fluid world, but it's really about understanding which animal you are so you can attack it appropriately. That's awesome. I love that you you put that in the spirit animal realm. I always uh, I, I always have these things uh, called like breaking your code, you know, which is uh, very similar to the spirit animal. And uh, when, when we break the code, we we break them up into four four pieces as well. But are you an action person? Um, are you a blueprint person? Are you a knowledge person? Or are you a nurturing person? Uh, you know, which has some significant uh, similarities with your different components where, you know, action where your values are freedom, flexibility, spontaneity, action, opportunity, excitement, attention, stimulation, competition, winning, fun. And what does your image look like? Right. So that's like the definition of, uh, of, of a, an action person and so um i have found myself to be a combination uh where i like i major in army ant which is action uh, and i minor in what's called blueprint uh you know which is stability structure systems planning processes predictability responsibility duty roles credentials titles and tradition uh and so i love it yeah yeah that's cool i love i love how you break that down and i love having those kind we could probably do a whole show on you know cracking your code or 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 understanding what your spirit animal is because i think i, I think that's important for people to understand like you know you, you it's it's really hard to effectively manage yourself um if you don't know who you are and what your strengths and weaknesses are yeah and, and when you think about strengths and weaknesses when you focus on your weaknesses, it's just making them not a liability. It's not trying to make that weakness a strength. It's just trying to make that weakness not a liability. 
hey, that's why I try to work on my left kicks all the time in karate because my right ones are <laughs> my right ones are spot on. My left ones not so much. So, you know, it's not about me making sure that my left is as good as my right, but making sure that my left is not uh, going to compromise me in any circumstance. <laughs> No, you're right. I mean, sports analogies are great. When you look at if it's if you had 12 Tom Brady's on the field, that would be a bad team, right? A horrible team. So it's team. about understanding what's your strength, <laughs> what's your weakness, and just making sure that that weakness isn't a liability. So I love your analogy with that, with the martial arts. That's great. Are you having trouble finding hand sanitizer? Well, Spa Treat has you covered. There's no need to go searching high and low. Just visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and place your order on their easy-to-use website. On schedule delivery. One of the great things about this product, Spa Treat Fulfillment Team is working around the clock to provide people hand sanitizer during this time of need and get your order to you as quickly as possible, even faster than Amazon. Spa Treat also has the lowest price of any of its competitors. Spa Treat has 62% alcohol content and the FDA recommends between 60 to 80 for maximum protection. This one has 62 because it doesn't dry your hands out. I use this stuff every single day. It is fantastic. It's got certified organic extracts with the ingredients in that hand sanitizer that are of the highest quality and they're designed to leave your hands smelling and feeling fresh while protecting you at the same time. The best part, there's no tricky residue left over. None. None of that sticky stuff. Four cents available, unscented, tea tree, lavender, and lemon. And best of all, this product right here is made in the good old United States of America. A lot of companies are having trouble dealing with the current demands, so Spa Treat has dedicated themselves to providing a much-needed product in the time of crisis. Spa Treat has better prices, faster shipping, and a larger supply than any of their competition. There isn't even a close second. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and enter promo code SPA SPA at checkout to receive 5% off your entire order. That's right. Not only are they offering the lowest price available, but they're also offering our listeners a discount. This promo code is exclusive to Voice America and only our listeners get this discount. Spa Tree and Voice America came together on this sponsorship in order to provide Americans something they could really need right now. Peace of mind. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and order yours today. That's SpaTreatOfficial.com and make sure you use the promo code SPA at checkout to receive 5% off your entire order. SpaTreeOfficial.com. Get your awesome hand sanitizer. Yeah, well, you know, Eric, thank you, man. I appreciate you being on. It's been, what a great, I just looked at the clock and we're already, you know, wrapping up almost 52 minutes of content here and it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Um, one last question before we go, what's, what's next for you? Where do you, where do you guys go from here? I mean, I know you, you got the, the focus project, but um, what's, what's the next initiative for Equal Man? Yeah, no, I mean, we're an edutainment company. So anything we can do to help empower people to their best life. And so we've got a couple things. We always work in projects. So we've actually got a card game that's coming out because everyone's at home in the pandemic. So something that'll put smiles on people's faces. I've got a fiction book most likely coming out next year. Um, might not be under my name. So that's then we're always thinking two years out, five years out. And then looking three years out, it's about... We might do a, a song that we want to win a Grammy. So we've got these big, hairy goals. And then looking 10, 20 years out, we want to kind of be the Walt Disney. Like, how do we put a smile on people's faces? When you think about Walt Disney, he's long gone, but he's still putting smiles on kids' faces. And so that's what we're trying to do, just empower 7 billion people by 2030. So I appreciate you having me on because the more people that know about it, we can't do it alone. They can help us get the message out there and um, do what we can. So thank you so much. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank you again, Eric, for being on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this on voiceamerica.com, congratulations. That's where we are. If you're not, that's okay. I won't hold it against you. You can listen to us on all major podcast outlets once the show airs. Uh, you know, Make sure you guys tune in next week at 12 o'clock Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Voice America Variety Channel, uh, and check out some more Finding Your Frequency. And if you're on one of those social sites or on a podcasting site, please make sure that you give us a nice five-star rating because it's way better than four stars, and we love those five-star ratings. Uh, drop us a little bit of a review. And, of course, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, want to be on the show, want to hear about some certain topics, make sure to shoot us an email at info at Voice America.com or go check out the website voiceamerica.com and again thank all of you listeners for tuning in and hey today is the 4th of December hope everybody's getting ready for that Christmas time because I know I am so thank you guys for tuning in I'm Ryan Treasure finding your frequency we'll talk to you guys next week